Bill Maher and voices on the left are calling out Disney and Nickelodeon for the way they treated their young stars on those shows of the 90s and early 2000s. Has permanent damage been done though? And are the companies willing to recompensate and fix the problems that they may have created? Today we'll tell you why it's worse than you thought because we're gonna do a comparison of who they hired and who they fired. Hello folks, welcome back to the Pro Channel. We are so happy to have you here as we cover topics that need covering even when, as we uncover them, they're a bit on the taboo side. Vash, are you ready to do the dance we have to do so well here on YouTube? Oh, I am. I have to, um, I'm, I, you know what? I'm a pretty good dancer when I have to be, so Pro, I think I'm up for the challenge. All right, we'll tippy-toe around it, folks. We're talking about stuff like iCarly. We're talking about stuff like... Uh, those Nickelodeon shows, those Disney shows with those young stars and starlets, and uh, we'll just we'll just show you right now, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to the left today. We're doing it because we want to show you that on the left there's a fracturing in terms of how they view this. This is out of the DailyBeast.com. It's by Sam Brody, and it says Musk. That's Elon Musk. Says Bill Maher hit the bullseye comparing Nickelodeon to Neverland Ranch. Holy smokes! Bill Maher has labeled Kids TV Network Nickelodeon as Neverland Ranch with craft services and teed off on progressives' views around particular types of identity and youth, earning the endorsement of none other than Elon Musk. Maher said the documentary was scene after scene of the child stars of their day being exposed to degradation. And he said that he was grossed out. Then Elon Musk responds and says, Bill Maher hits the bullseye. Now that is, uh, that is, Strange bedfellows indeed. So what is this all about? Well, Marr, a longtime liberal who has taken to voicing anti-woke takes, began the segment by discussing Quiet on Set, the new Max documentary series investigating misconduct and perhaps exploitation at Nickelodeon in the 1990s and 2000s. But he did not simply stop there. He also went after Disney. He said, it must be pointed out that when the evil governor of Florida was saying the exact same thing about kids and creepy stuff at Disney, that liberals now find intolerable at Nickelodeon, he was dismissed as a hick and a bigot. But why would a kid's content factory like Disney be all that different than the one at Nickelodeon? Now, what this is doing, Vash, is it is exposing to those who might not hear it anywhere else, i.e. those who live in a bubble on the left, and folks, we're not saying that only people on the left live in a bubble, but it's exposing them to what we've been saying for a while now, that there are some strange things that are happening inside the Disney company, and now we'll cover as well Nickelodeon because of all this stuff that's been coming out. So, Vash, what do you think about how how does Disney proceed from here? And I guess more importantly, how do we make sure that kids are safe when they're part of Hollywood? Oh, this is this is quite quite a, a tough topic here. That's for sure because uh, Disney themselves have wrestled with this. I know uh, back in when Lindsay Lohan and everything was going down there, uh, there was an up and coming star within Disney's ranks, Miley Cyrus, interestingly enough. Uh, and, and I, I remember executives at the time concerned that it's like, Oh, we don't want necessarily the same thing to happen to Miley Cyrus as did Lindsay Lohan. Um, I think some of that was avoided, but others, uh, other aspects, maybe, maybe not so much. So it's, it's definitely a, a, a an issue that has plagued Hollywood for a long time. Obviously, you know, um, we've heard a lot of stuff regarding the casting couch and so forth and how uh, overzealous maybe uh, producers or executives take advantage of people who are manipulative uh, or, or, or can be easily manipulated. And that includes children. So it's 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 quite difficult for sure. I will say, though, Bill Maher did touch on something that was very well, maybe that wasn't the quite the right term right there. Bill Maher did reference something that was interesting that the executive at the middle of all this stuff regarding Nickelodeon was hired onto Disney in order to handle some children's sure. programming that they have, which right. is completely bizarre because obviously this person was convicted. This person is now uh, part of a, um, a list, let's say, right? Um, in, in legal right. And appa there. Apparently this was running rampant Vash with uh, stuff like the Amanda show, all that. Uh, you had shows like iCarly, Zoe 101, Victorious. Right. And some of the names, you know, that are involved here are people like Ariana Grande and Jamie Lynn Spears and so many more 
who were subjected to somebody who frankly didn't need to be around kids, it looks like. And you're right. There seems to be uh, there seems to be some serious sharing of blame here between Nickelodeon and Disney. And uh, both companies should have been doing a much better job of protecting their kids' stars. And it makes one wonder when we look at the outcomes for some of these young celebrities, they, they, they often struggle tremendously as young adults, not all of them. But it makes you wonder if some of those uh, young adults were subjected to things that they should not have been in the past and that that has damaged them. And maybe these, these companies should own up to that and maybe they should assist these people if they were damaged in this process. I'm not making that allegation. I'm just saying it's a possibility. What, what do you think about that, Bash? I actually like that approach. I, I, I would be interested in a program or something being set up because we, we all know that uh, Disney has talked about helping you know mothers ex- receive some care that maybe some state is banning, let's say. We've heard about uh, some processes that the company would necessarily fund when it comes to uh you know gender reassignment and so forth so it's like okay well why can't we have why can't we establish programs or something to help children or child stars uh make it past you know uh, the hollywood limelight let's say right Uh, we, we could we could necessarily uh do that i think for sure but here's the thing so disney re- hires this executive that's been Oh, I, I connected with 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 all the horrible stuff. things. Yeah, horrible on, things. Yeah, on a Nickelodeon side. Okay, but John Lasseter's not okay to work with the company, and he that, was okay. That's a, that's like a that. heck of a point, Vash. You know, John Lasseter, whatever his vices may be, and everybody has vices, and maybe his are more pronounced than others. But you know, he hugs too much. Get rid of the man who's making the the company. You know, be what it is, and then you know we're hiring some somebody who's been. Uh, alleged at the least to do horrible things from Nickelodeon. And uh, here's the odd thing about this, Vash. It's just so hypocritical. It's just so terribly hypocritical. And I know that we should know that because these people are utter hypocrites, but it's so hypocritical that they espouse these virtues and they tell us that we're the bad ones, that we're negative, that we're not, we don't do what the corporations do, which is to make the world a better place. And they're horrible behind the scenes. Look at this. And they weren't always horrible. Think about the experiences that we talk about with L.W. Ghost when he talks about what he has seen and how kids were protected. And then we look at what happened at Nickelodeon and Disney in the 90s and the early 2000s, allegedly. And it's just, it's gross. And there should be somebody. There should be somebody on a set who says, no, I don't care if this ruins my career. We're not going to ruin kids. Like, I'll sacrifice my career if it means protecting the child. And that, that needed to happen. And it just apparently didn't. But I, I want to ask you this, Vash. So what we're looking at right now across the landscape of entertainment is if you're, if you're paying much attention to games, right? They've destroyed so much of our movies and our shows. And so they're moving to games now. They've been in games. But uh, once, you've, once you've sent everything asunder in movies and, and shows and comics, I guess you got a full force ahead in games to ruin it as well. So we're watching this happening with Pokemon Go. We're happen- watching this happen with Warhammer 40K. And I I just want to ask you, Vash, it seems like we're reaching that point now where the pendulum might shift, where people have had enough, where they're seeing the hypocrisy of this. They're seeing their favorite things destroyed. And then they're looking behind the curtain and saying, oh, oh, so this is who you hire. Oh, this is who you you keep on board. You'll fire Gina Carano in a heartbeat. You'll fire John Lasseter for hugging. But you will hire these kinds of people. You'll hire Harvey Weinstein's personal assistant. like. There's there's something there's something very rotten at the bottom of this this pit and there's a real pit with Disney and Nick. What do you think about it? You know, I thought I think uh, I think you're right. Um, I think a lot of this stuff started to change as soon as, uh, interestingly enough, uh, Christopher Rufo actually came out with some of those videos that of, of internal discussions talking about not so secret agendas and so forth. That was actually featured in this Bill Maher um, uh, skit there. So more people are becoming aware of it. And as they become aware, they're like, whoa, wait a minute, hang on here. (laughs) Disney was a brand that I used to trust my kids with. I don't necessarily think I can do that anymore, or at least uh, not be able to, uh, not pre-screen as uh, maybe uh, parents had engaged in before. When it comes to games, yeah, I mean, it's, I think there are some, 
let's say, cultural warriors who understand that uh, children are are susceptible to influence from from all places, and so all of those outlets must be pursued in terms of um, in in terms of whatever agenda that they have, and so people are kind of catching on to that, and I think uh, people are becoming a little bit more sensitive to those to those issues, which is good, but uh, it, it won't it won't stop until we do. Well, there's a perversion and a corruption inside these companies that needs to be uh, tossed out. It just it needs to go away. And these these people who participate and who allow this kind of stuff to be percolated out, uh, it needs to be stopped. And hiring people of extreme low moral character, that's that's something that just cannot continue. It's cratering these co these companies, and it's anti capital. It's anti success. It's anti profit. It's anti everything. So how about we just stop it, folks? How about we just stop it and we get people back into uh, the director's chair and the writer's chair and all of that who at least have some modicum of, of uh, kindness and, and generosity and ethics towards others. That would be a heck of a thing. And maybe they'd you stop destroying franchises if those kinds of people were there. I would hope so. But you see Bill Maher kind of breaking ranks, right? And he's saying, hey, call on this and stuff And the Young out. Turks, Vash. That's, the, that's been the other fascinating thing. And I, we're not a political channel. But right. the Young Turks, you know, we, we're starting to see some fracturing there. It's, it's as if Hollywood and entertainment, they've just gone too far. I saw this with Pokemon Go. You know, even people who are way out there, when, they, when, when Pokemon Go put out this latest patch where the body types no longer resemble human anatomy, People were like, I'm, I'm the wokest of the woke, but this, this is weird. And I just think finally we've reached that point and, and it went far too far, but we're there. Vash, mm -hmm. I want to thank you for being here. And Vash, tell the folks out there about this brand new channel that uh, you are uh, leading the way with and it's doing phenomenally. And we're so thankful for everyone's support. But Vash, what is it that you're up to over there? Well, we are up to uh, that Park Place podcast online, or as we like to call it, T3PO, showing highlights from the WW Pro channel and also uh, that Park Place, interestingly enough. Uh, but not only that, though, we have some exclusive content there as well. As people might know, uh, the genre, guys, is a YouTube sensation, but it's been a member exclusive on WW Pro's channel and will remain go continue to do so so please go ahead and become a member today for sure but after 90 days of exclusivity it's moving over to t3po and we're having our first uh, episode of that launch on friday and every single wednesday we have uh, the hollywood backlot with lou and you a new show just exclusively for that channel as well so come on over hop on the fun there i think we have a live stream tomorrow at uh, three eastern if i'm not mistaken so that's gonna that's be a lot right. of fun as well and folks don't forget that unlike uh with nickelodeon disney you don't have to worry. Vash is a top-notch guy, and we take care of the folks around us. We believe in it. We think it matters. We think that it was a baseline expectation, and clearly some of these companies perhaps have let us down gravely. And for mm. that, they need to, uh, well, they need to fix it as best they can. Some things are unfixable, but they need to fix it. All right, folks, that is the end of this video today. Thank you for going on the journey with us. If there's one thing you take away, remember who they hire and who they fire. That's the thing to remember from what we've just watched and talked about, is it really matters. The people they hired, perhaps not good. The people they fired, perhaps a little bit more like you. Gina Carano, wonderful person, I think. And so are you, probably. Yeah, you are. All right, folks, it's now time for your chance to participate. Click the like button, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms, it's the notification bell, and drop a comment down below. Let us know your thoughts. And folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, keep having fun, and keep the kids safe. We can all do that. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <sighs> Uh, I, I just, uh, I put out a tweet of a m fat minority with a booger in her nose and I said, This is an empowered woman. <laughs> and Kataka retweeted it. <laughs> uh, you don't have your own X account, do you? Oh, well, I actually created it a while ago. The greatest troll I've pulled off in a long time. Do you know how many things uh, I've secretly tanked? Oh, gosh, I hope not. That would make me legally culpable. 
but uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sweet baby ink. <laughs> huh? Yep. I'm the. <laughs> Shut up. I'm the CEO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, look, this is my profile picture. <laughs> Everyone's just AI. It's great. I'm so excited to gaslight everyone and see what they're going to like next because they think it's socially obligated. <laughs> Wait. <sighs> so you're... No way. You're yep. the CEO of Sweet Baby Inc. Maybe. But first, you should see the jewelry company I created. <laughs> We're gonna get sued. <laughs> oh. It's a no, yeah, it's gonna be good. <laughs>